Welcome to another edition of Live with Andrew. This is our mathematics lesson today on 428. This one is going to focus on algebra. So as we go through today, as you're here and you have any responses to any of the questions, you can always respond in the comment section if you're watching this on YouTube, or you can respond on the chat box if you're here with us live in the Zoom meeting right now. But today we are going to be talking about algebra. And um, before we start that though, again, always wanna make sure that you and your families are safe as we're starting to travel around and do some things. I hope you're, you're staying safe through everything that's going on and you're getting back to work and, and doing all those things. Please follow us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, Again, you can just search Rankin County Adult Education. That's the easiest way to get in touch with us. We will be more than glad to kind of help um, any way you can if you have any problems with that. And we're still trying to put content out for you to access. If you're not watching this live with us now, you're probably watching it on YouTube, but go ahead and subscribe to the page and that will allow us to get more information out to you. As soon as we're done with this as well, it'll be posted live on YouTube and anything else that we post again will show up on there. As we always talk about and say, all the program that we're doing, all the things that you had when you were in the program with us live and in person, you can access from home. So please continue to do that. There's new information that we're getting kind of daily from each of these programs and each of the um, organizations that we work with and GED is working with a lot of those and hopefully there'll be some new information coming out different things that we can do that if you're already working like in KAT well GED is starting to to talk to them more about different things that they can offer and option and options that they have um, just yesterday I talked for a while with one of the reps from GED about some of the things that will be coming up so keep working in those there's things moving in the background that can hopefully be there to um, just help you to be ready to take the test and hopefully be testing sooner than later. So please pay attention and keep working on all that and look for updates on Facebook and through emails and stuff that we'll contact you about. Again, if you have questions about logging in or how to access at any time, you can email adult.education at RCSD or contact your teacher through Remind or email whatever um, way you talk and communicate with your teachers. I can't emphasize this enough again, um, Khan Academy, Khan Academy, Khan Academy. You will be referenced back to Khan Academy several times as we're going through the, the class today. There's a lot of the practice that you'll, you'll need to do to be more fluent like we always talk about in our math classes. To do that, you will go to Khan Academy. That's the, the best way to do it. You can also work on the programs that we, we have, whether it's KET or Essential Ed, but they only have a limited number of problems. Once you've done some of those lessons, you've kind of maxed out on all the practice that they have, but through Khan Academy, it has unlimited amount of practice that you can do. If you still need more practice, contact your teacher or email me and I'll be more than glad to get you some more practice that you can do there. And always, Smart Start classes are available via Canvas. To do that, you just will need to email me and I can get you signed up for that. It is a great way to get your Smart Start certificate and certification while you are just at home with nothing else to do. It's a, a good way to kind of get yourself ahead of the other people. When you get back to work, you'll be head and shoulders above the rest. Now, we are getting into algebra. And this is featuring Al Kawazami. Kawazami is his name. Um, he is the father of algebra. We are going to be talking about algebra and why algebra is algebra um, and kind of why we use him for that. And this is continuing that progression of math skills that we talked about. And um, there's a little bit, I'm a social studies guy, so there's a little bit of a history lesson in the math lesson today, but hopefully it will help it all kind of make sense and you'll get to understand a little bit more to it. And I know what you're thinking first is, what's Al Jabrar and who is this Al Kazawarmi guy? And um, we will look at both of those and why it is that way and 
what's going on with that. First, the guy's name, Muhammad Ibn Musa al Khazarmi, is known, like I mentioned ago, he's the father of algebra. He also, from the, the slide a second ago, um, is the way we have our, our numbering system. The numbers that we use today, the Arabic numbering system, um, he's the one that pretty much is the one that, that kind of came from with the way the numbers are. And uh, from the slide a, a few back, it shows like the number one only had one angle on it. Number two had two angles on it. Number three had three angles. That's how that kind of came about, which I thought was really interesting when I was researching this. And he also wrote a book called Hizab al-Jabbar Walla Mukalakba or something. I don't speak Arabic. <laughs> you can figure that out on your own, but um, I think it's Mukabala. So Hisab Al Jabbar Walla Al Mukabala is the book that he wrote, which translated it means the compendious book on calculation by completion and balancing. And what's kind of cool about this, and what I like about going back and looking at this, seeing what his book was called helps us to better understand what algebra is. Algebra is in Arabic, algebra meant restoration or completion. So when we're doing algebra, we're trying to restore or complete something, which I, that's what really just kind of made me go, wow, that's that's a good way to look at what we're doing in algebra. A lot of people look at algebra and go, I hate it. I can't stand it. I can't do it. Oh, I'm good until you start putting letters and numbers together. But really what we're trying to do is restore something, get something back or complete something, trying to find something that we're is incomplete and make it to complete. And the makabala at the end of that is that completion and balancing in Arabic, that word means reduction or balance. And that's the thing that we want to kind of think about with algebra. It has to balance out. What you do on one side has to balance the other side. So kind of keeping that mindset of restoring something to completion and then reducing or making something come to a balance is what algebra is about. And I like to kind of break things down and make things seem not so scary. And, and thinking of it that way, I'm just completing something to make it balance. That doesn't seem as scary as you're doing algebra now. And that's something that is important for us to think about as we're going through and doing our algebra. All right, now with this, we want to carry it through. This whole idea is what we're carrying through to today. We're restoring and completing by reducing and balancing. That's kind of the, if you want to make a quick jot of what algebra is, like I, I was just saying, we're trying to get restoration and completion by reducing and balancing. And that's the, the concept that we're going to carry through everything that we're doing in the next um, 20, 30 minutes that we're, we're together here. Now, you may wonder, um, was al Khazarmi, who actually was alive from 17, no, 750 to 860 is about when he lived. So not that long ago in the grand scheme of all this, but actually even before this time, the ancient Babylonians were doing algebra as well. And what I thought was interesting when I was looking at this, there was a thing called the Plimpton tablet and it was from 1900 to 1600 BC. So, okay, we're in 2020, go back to zero and then go back almost 2000 years. It was a tablet that was created. And what I thought was awesome about this is what we talked about last week, the Pythagorean triples. It was, it was showing those relationship of certain numbers that have that Pythagorean relationship. Now, Pythagoras came later than this. So these were even before Pythagoras himself was looking at this. But the ancient Babylonians did algebra way better than a lot of other people civilizations, I guess, that we think about. A lot of times we think of the Egyptians as being really good mathematicians. Their algebra and what they did was not as complex as what the Babylonians did, even years and years before that. So I thought that was really kind of an interesting thing, especially that this tablet that they found, and that's the picture of it right there, 
it had those Pythagorean triples, which again, it kind of ties us into what we talked about last week. Um, and we used algebra to solve those last week. So that's a cool skill that's kind of translating over. So I kind of liked how that was bleeding in to something else there. Now, one of the first times that algebra or something with algebra was used, it was used in the novel um, Don Quixote by Cervantes. He wrote the, it's considered the first ever novel. Most stories before that were either done orally or they were poems and other stuff, but this was truly kind of set up in a novel setting. And it was the story of Don Quixote, who was a little crazy and going out and he um, ends up doing some stuff. He ends up fighting some windmills, which we'll talk about in just a second. But algebraista was used to describe a bone setter, which I tried to explain this to my wife yesterday and she said I don't really care and I understand and you might not really care either but I thought it was kind of interesting and a little more what m most people think about with algebra as painful and a bone setter was somebody if somebody had a broken bone they would literally like reset the bones and help people to be restored and again that's that whole idea that we're looking at is restoring and restoration of numbers and expressions that we'll be talking about. And also though, the reason I like using that Don Quixote example is in windmills, and that's the background that I have behind me now and you see on the slides, in Don Quixote, the story, he goes and he's kind of roaming around the Spanish countryside and he's trying to defend Spain and fight off the enemies and things like that and he sees these windmills and he thinks that the windmills are actually giants and they're these creatures or these men that have been transformed to look like windmills so he goes and fights the windmills and the reason that I like this as a an example or kind of an, an illusion or an allegory for why it's kind of like algebra is a lot of people view algebra as something that's way bigger and it's too hard to do. And because they're not looking at it tr rightly, or they're not looking at it in the, in the right way, or they're not taking it in small steps, it is kind of daunting. It does seem like a giant that you have to fight. And kind of like Don Quixote, um, as he goes to fight the windmills, he gets his spear caught in the sail it flips him over, he gets hurt real bad and all that. And a lot of times that's how kind of people approach it. They just go at it, they end up falling, they don't like it and they've hated it ever since. Whether it was something you learned about a long time ago or something more recently, we want you to understand algebra is not that scary. It's not a giant trying to attack you, okay? So let's get to some of the basics of algebra. And one of the first things we wanna remember in algebra is some of the terminology. All right, with algebra, and when you're trying to do algebraic expressions and stuff, we, we're gonna be using the basic operations. That goes back to our first lesson we did when we talked about those four basic operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So when we look at addition, some of the, the words that we use to describe addition are words like sum, or plus, or more than, or increased by, or added to. As I've been working with my son, my first grader, he's been doing different math skills and a lot of addition subtraction problems. And they use these terms all the time. One problem, it'll say sum. Sometimes it'll say added to. It'll say Susie had four flowers. Betty had six flowers. How many flowers do they have all together? And all those terms that they're teaching my first grade son are these same terms that we're seeing here that we're going to use in algebra. And that's one of the reasons that algebra gets hard is a lot of those skills that we're using in it, we learned as first graders that my son's learning right now. So it's important to kind of understand when you see some plus more than, increased by, added to, all together, things like that, that represents addition. Okay, so that's a good thing to start to, to put into your mind. When you see some of those things, that's what they're meaning by that. As we go into subtraction, words like subtract, take away, less than, difference, decreased, minus, 
those are words that have to do with subtraction. And again, like with my son that we were doing just a little while ago, there was, there were four fish, four fish swam away. So as they swam away, it's moving away. That means it's been taken away. Like we see there on the second one, take away. As you start to see again, some of these phrases, you need to know when you see any of these, that means to subtract. And that's what we're trying to do on those expressions or when we get into the algebra for that in just a little while. Okay, so if you are taking notes and you're watching this on YouTube and you wanna write this down, hit pause, write those down real quick. If you can think of other things that have to do with addition or subtraction, leave some space so you can write those in later as you go because it's important to see what they're asking and to know what some of those words mean. When we're trying to problem solve, a lot of times we don't know what they're even asking us to do because it doesn't have a minus sign. Well, it might not. It might say decreased or what's the difference between these two numbers. And as you do that, you'll start to see ways that you can work that out. All right. So that's addition and subtraction. You also have the same thing with multiplication and division. Now with multiplication, there's not too much. You just have product times. Um, there's not a whole lot of other things that you can have for that. With division, again, it doesn't have as much as adding and subtracting. Um, I put a couple here. There's more. I just, in the sake of time, didn't sit there and think about it too much. That's uh, most of the ones you'll see right there when you see quotient, that's the one that messes people up sometimes. They look at that and go, wait, what's a quotient? That's not something that we're as familiar with. So you just need to know what a quotient is. It's the, the answer when you divide, okay? So we wanna make sure that we're looking at that and you're familiar with those. Again, pause this if you need to, write those down so you can go through and become more familiar with this. All right, so we know some terminology here, a little bit more that we need to understand. In algebra, expressions are used to solve problems. All right, so expressions are, are like an algebra sentence. And we're gonna look at this in a couple different ways. A lot of times when we think of algebra, we don't necessarily think of this completely, but the key thing in algebra that messes people up is when we get into variables. A variable, is a letter or symbol that represents one or more numbers. This is when they add a letter in instead of numbers. And I hear students all the time, oh, I'm good until you start putting letters and numbers together. And yes, that's what a variable is. But again, we're talking about algebra. We're not gonna get too in depth with everything today, but my first grader was doing algebra today. He had problems and it said four plus box equals 13. And he had to come up with what was the number that goes in that box. Now that box, it was a symbol. It was just a square that represented a number. And in that case, four plus box equaled 13. What did the box equal? And my first grade son was able to figure this out. Now, was he freaking out because, oh, I don't know letters and numbers? No, now he was spinning in his chair being a silly first grader, but he was able to answer those problems because it wasn't, algebra to him it was just that's my math assignment all right so we want to make sure that we're, we're looking at that and understanding it here we see x plus five now if you notice there is not an equal sign here because this is an expression not an equation when we get to an equation that's where it's going to equal out and there's going to be a balance that we have to do to both sides but before we can get to that, we need to look at expressions and how to evaluate some expressions. All right, now, if I told you, okay, X plus five, well, if X is one, what would the answer to that one be? X plus five, if X is one, we just swap it out. One plus five is six. If I told you X equals 100, 100 plus five is 105. Not too hard to kind of see that and understand. A variable just represents a number or numbers. Now, you need to remember the rules of and orders of operations, the rules of the order of operations when solving algebraic expressions. We've talked about them before. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or Jim's. If you have any questions about that, what you can do, go to our YouTube page, it was our second lesson. Um, there's a whole math 
um, playlist there that has all the lessons in order. This one will go on to that same playlist and be the, the fourth lesson there. But it's about order of operations. So when you're going through, you can see the order of operations. You can click on it, watch it, go through, rewind, make sure you know that through and through, backwards and forwards. And all these lessons are the same way. You'll be able to access those and go through it. All right, so now let's practice a few of these. All right, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can pause it if you need to. Um, we are gonna take some time in the class to let the students who are here for the Zoom meeting go through and do these um, and put their answers in the chat box. But just go through, you're not solving it. Here, you're just writing what the expression is. Um, we'll do the first one together there, x plus five. So as we're looking at that, we have an x. We know it's plus five. What does plus mean? Plus means to add. So the answer to that one would be x plus five. So take a few seconds, go through, and answer the next questions. You can just jot them down on some scratch paper, but take a couple minutes or a couple seconds. And if you're watching this on YouTube, just pause it and you can start it back when you're ready. All right, you've had a little bit of time to do each of those. The next one there, n divided by nine is just the letter n divided by nine. So there's a couple ways you can do it, n divided by nine, or you could do n with the little slash line, or you can put n over nine. All three of those are ways you can show that same expression, n divided by nine. On the next one there, six less than B. Now this one's a little tricky because we see six less. So less than has to do with subtraction, but it's six less than B. So which needs to come first? We need to put the B first because six is less than B. So if we put six minus B, that's not what it's saying. That would be six more than B because we're having to, to take that off there. So we want to make sure that we're looking at each one of those and doing them correctly there. The last one, y times two. So we see the times. What does times mean? Times means to multiply, like we talked about in our previous lessons with our times table. You could write this one a couple of different ways. You could say y times two with the dot, Notice I didn't use an X. If you use an X, again, we're using variables. Is the X of another variable or is the X mean multiply? We don't know in this case. So that's why we're gonna use the dot. You could also write this just by putting the two next to each other. If the variable is touching the number, that means to multiply, all right? So that's one way you could put it. Most of the time though, they don't have the variable first. They do it this last way. 2y. You usually put the number before the variable in that situation. So that's the ways that you could write that. You could also put it in a parenthesis. Parenthesis also means to multiply there. So, and I put y2 just keeping it in the order that it was, but it could also be 2 parenthesis y. That would be the same thing. As long as they're touching there on the parenthesis, that means to multiply. All right, so those are ways that you can show those same expressions. Now, as we move on, practice a couple of these. You're, again, you're not going to solve it. These get a little more difficult. So if you're watching this on YouTube, if you want to pause it for a second and go through and take some time to do it. If you're watching this live, you can um, take a couple seconds to, to try to work these out. And what we're going to do on this one this first one that we have, it has a couple of steps to do, all right? And I'm gonna show you how this kind of breaks down as you're working each of these out. This is the way that I try to do these problems. And I'm gonna tell you, in looking through the books that I have and the books that I kind of looked at to get this lesson put together and what I've worked with students before, a lot of times as we do this, 
people have trouble with these kind of problems because they don't know where to begin. They don't know the order to put it. And that's why it's good to take some practice and take some time solving expressions and being able to figure out algebraic expressions. Again, and I'll mention this in a second, go to Khan Academy if you need extra practice on this. Contact me, I can give you some extra practice. But you need to learn how to break these down. So what we wanna do, we wanna look and just take down what each thing says. We see that it says 13 less. And if you notice, I wrote it with the minus sign first because it's 13 less. So that means we're gonna have to subtract 13 from it. And then the next part, then four times the number. So we have four times, so I went ahead and wrote four with the time sign. So we're gonna multiply that, a number. And it's just what the number is. So we need to know which order are we gonna put that. So as you see my next step here, what do I do? I kind of rearrange it a little bit, four times the number minus 13, because that's gonna be 13 less than four times the number. So as I'm looking at it, it's 13 less, that was the first part, then four times a number, all right? So a lot of times when we see this, we will see it with a parenthesis or um, some other way of kind of separating it. This one doesn't have a parenthesis, but again, like I mentioned a second ago, following the order of operations, if we were gonna solve that problem, would we multiply or subtract first? Well, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or Jim's, multiplication and division comes before addition or subtraction. So we would need to multiply that first, then we would be able to subtract the 13. All right, so that's what the first one is. On the second one here, the quotient of X and 10. Now, they just give us two, two things there. There's a variable X and a number 10, and it says quotient. Now, I remember back a few slides, quotient is the answer of a division problem well, which one do I put first? Do I put the X or do I put the 10? And this is one that my brain like has trouble with because to me, I look at it and go, well, it doesn't specifically say, but it does. Which one comes first? The X comes first. So I wrote that, showed it a different way. So as I go through here and I'm looking at it and I see quotient means divide X and 10, which one's first? the X is first. So when I write this, I'm going to divide X by 10. I'm going to put the X divided by 10 or X divided by 10 that way or X over 10. That's because the X comes first. When you see this, the X is first in the problem, in the expression there, it's first, that's the one that we're gonna use. We're going to use that one first. All right, so that's what we're gonna do on those. Now, here's an expression that you'll get to solve because I'm going to give you what Y equals. Before, we were just finding what the expression was and, and writing them out. The next kind of step that you follow here and when you're working on evaluating expressions, and again, if you need practice on this, just go to Khan Academy and put in evaluate expressions and it'll give you plenty of practice on this. But it's asking us to find the value of three Y minus six when Y equals eight. All right, so if you're on YouTube, just hit pause, take a couple seconds, work this out, and then you can start it back and see if you came up with the same answer that I did. All right, as you're looking at this, I'm gonna break it down just step by step. The very first thing that I would do if I was solving this problem myself, I would write the problem down. All right, now, you may say, well, it's written right there, why would I need to write it down? I always copy down the exact problem when I'm writing it on my scratch paper. The reason I do that, I don't wanna to try to do a step in my head. That way, if I miss it, I don't know where I'm at. I can see exactly what the problem is. So that's the first thing I do. I just copy it directly down into the, the first line of my scratch work. The second thing that I do is substitute Y equals eight. All right, so I'm just substituting for the Y, the eight. So I write it again, but I put the parentheses around the eight because it's representing what that Y is. I just put it right there. The reason I don't just make it an eight, 
then it looks like I wrote 38 and that's not what the problem is. It's three parentheses around that variable, which is eight. So now that I have that, this is like we did a few um, lessons ago with the order of operations. I have to multiply before I subtract. So I'm going to solve and it's 24 minus six. 24 minus six is 18. So I just plug in the Y into the spot and then do the math for that one. All right, so if you were working it, if you got 18, good job. If you didn't get 18, look back at it and see what you might have done differently. Here's another one. A squared plus 4A when A equals 3. So we're just finding the value of A squared plus 4A when A equals 3. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit pause, take all the time you need to work it out. If you're working it here in class, take a couple seconds to answer this. As you're going through and doing this one, what's the first thing I always say I do? I'm not just doing this to show you, I'm doing this because this is how I work these problems. I write the problem down. Just go ahead, right out the gate, I copy the problem down to make sure I'm getting it exactly right. I don't wanna do anything that I'm not supposed to do on there. So then I'm gonna substitute the A equals three. So I just find wherever there's an A and I'm gonna put in a three. I didn't put the three in parentheses at the beginning because it just had the exponent there, but I could have. Um, sometimes I do that, it's just, I try to, to put the number, if it's gonna be next to something where it's a problem, I know that the, the three has the exponent of two, I didn't have to put the parentheses around it. But for the three behind the four, I did, because I didn't want it to represent 43, it's four times. If they're next to each other, that means multiply. So, so now I'm going to solve it. How do I solve? I gotta follow my order of operations. What's the order of operations? Exponents comes before multiplication or addition. So I need to do my exponent first. Three squared is nine plus my multiplication. I can do it at the same time because it's opposite the plus sign. I knew this plus sign was gonna be the last thing I had to do there. So four times three is 12. Nine plus 12 is 21. So the answer to that one would be 21. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you have questions or you want more practice, algebraic expressions on Khan Academy. That's all you gotta do. Go into there, search for algebraic expressions and you'll be able to find more practice or contact your teachers, contact me, send me an email and I can make sure you get plenty of practice on this. A lot of times with algebra, the, the best way to build your fluency is to just kind of drill it down and just practice, practice, practice. The more you practice it, the more you see, it'll improve your operation skills, your problem solving skills in a lot of those. And that's a good way to do it, again, is on Khan Academy. Now, we're not done, even though that's something I show a lot of times at the end. Now we're gonna look past expressions and look into equations. When we're doing equations, that's when it has equal signs. When you see is, that's where the equal sign goes. All right, so in this one, x plus five, it's the same expression we used before, but I gave you something that it equals. Now, again, think back to what we talked about with Kawazawi, Zami, or the father of algebra, and he wrote his book that talked about making that balance. We have to make the x plus five and the seven, we gotta make the whole equation balance out, all right? So we're trying to make it equal, and that's what that equal sign means. That equal sign means that both sides are equal. So what do we do to one side to make it equal to the other side? And that's where we have to look at it and see what's gonna give us that equal. Now, sometimes in algebra, like this one, this is similar to what my son was doing today. It's pretty easy. You can see this one and instantly know Boom, the answer's two, I'm done, I'm a genius, let's keep going. But I want you to kind of think as we're going through this, even on the harder problems, that's still the same concept we're trying to do. Even on really complex algebra problems, you're still trying to find a balance. You're trying to do something that's equal. 
Now, one of the things that's equal and one of the kind of concepts I want you to understand when you're doing algebra, you always have to make sure what you do to one side, you do to the other side because it's equal. They're equal. So if I do something to one side of an equation, I have to do it to the other side of the equation. I can't do something to one side and not do it to the other. You have to keep that equality there. And that's something as you're, you're working equations, that's a way that you're going to be doing this a lot. And today we're kind of going through some basics of equations in algebra. As they get more complex, you're still going to follow the same concept. And it's important to, to get the roots of that. Just remember what you do to one side, you have to do the other side. You have to keep them equal. All right. So let's look at the next little part. On this one, this is the expression that we talked about before. We're trying to see what everything means there. X more than five is seven. So as you see what we have written there, it's just an expression. X more than five is seven. That's how we look and see, well, okay, the is is the equal sign. X is X, five is five and plus means more than, right? So we see how that expression and that equation is all written out. So as we are moving forward though, remember that when you're solving equations in algebra, that you need to know that the operations are opposite. The opposite of addition is subtraction. The opposite of subtraction is addition. The opposite of multiplication is division. The opposite of division is multiplication. So when you're solving algebra problems, and we'll get to some of these in just a second, if there's something that's addition, if I need to do the opposite of it to make something cancel out, I'm gonna have to subtract. If something is subtracted and I need to do the opposite to cancel it out, then I'm gonna have to, to do addition or add. And the same with multiplication, division, division, and multiplication. Also, we talked about this a few lessons ago, that square roots are the opposite of squares. If we have six squared is 36, well, the square root of 36 is six, all right? So seeing these and understanding the opposites of squares or square roots, that's gonna help you on some of the problems. We actually did that last lesson when we were doing the lessons on the Pythagorean theorem you did algebra we just didn't really call it algebra we just said we were doing pythagorean theorem and you were doing this skill right here with exponents and the square roots of exponents to, to determine answers that's a, a an algebraic skill and you were doing the opposite to get rid of something all right so let's look and practice a few of these all right so we have 10 plus a number is 30. now if you're on youtube you can hit pause, try to work this out. You can, you're gonna have to write it into an equation and then you're gonna have to solve it. So it has two steps to it. So if you're on YouTube, hit pause, work it out and see if you come up with the correct answer. If you're here in the class, you can take a couple seconds to be working this out. And then I'm gonna go with us and we're gonna keep, keep working it. So the first thing that we have to look at is what does each of those words mean? We need to get them to symbols and numbers. So we see that there is 10 plus. So that's pretty easy to, to see, 10 and plus. And then we have a number, and I'm just using n to represent number, is 30. What does is mean? Is is equal. When we see is, that means it's equal. And the last number there is 30. So 10 plus n equals 30. Now, I'm just gonna rewrite it, scrunched a little closer together. I bring down the equal sign, the e equals 30, and I bring the 10 in closer. It's really simple on these to see once you get it written down, okay, there's an equation. Now, a lot of you may instantly know, I've gotten a couple of people sending me some answers there. As you're going through and getting it, that's perfect. As you're doing this, you can look at it and go, well, 10 plus N equals 30, uh, duh, 20. My son, my first grader actually did one like this the other day. The teacher gave him something. How can you add up to 30 or something like that? And he able, was able to come up with this one on his own, which was pretty impressive. 
but we want to see, okay, I know it's 20. How can I prove that it's 20? How can I show the math that gives me the answer 20? And that's why I chose some of these easier problems so we could learn the math skills connected to it. All right, so when we're here and we're solving the equation, what we have to do is remember what is the opposite of positive 10 or plus 10? Because we have right here, there's a 10, and because there's not a negative sign in front of it, we know it's a positive 10. So what's the opposite of positive 10? Well, the opposite of positive 10 would be negative 10. So what we're gonna do is subtract both sides by 10. We're just gonna subtract 10 from both sides. On this first side here that we subtracted, what it's gonna do is cancel that. It gets rid of that 10. That 10 goes away on the left side. Because it goes, we subtracted 10 on the left side, on the right side of the equation, we're also subtracting 10, and that's gonna leave us when we're done to n equals 20. We subtracted 10 here, 30 minus 10 is 20. We subtract 10 from here, the 10 goes away, so it's gone, and we're left with just n. And n equals 20 is our answer. Now, is that what we said at the beginning? Yeah, we said 10 plus, and we knew 20 equals 30. So that answer gave us the correct answer. The way you can check this is just like we did a little while ago. We're going to, I told you it's 20. So you could just go back to the very beginning and swap it all out. Just anywhere it says N, put in the 20. 10 plus 20 equals 30. And if that gives you the right answer, if it balances, 30 equals 30, then you know you have the right answer. That's one of the good things about algebra, especially the more simplified problems. As soon as you find the answer, you can plug it right back in at the top and work it out and you can check your answer. So that's one of the things I like about it. I don't have to guess, oh, is that right? Is that right? It'll tell you if it's right. If you can solve it and get the right answer and it equals it out on both sides because equations are equal, and that's what we're trying to do is restore and get a balance. If they're both the same, then it balances. If one's too high and one's too low, it doesn't balance or vice versa. So that's what we're trying to do is restore and balance. All right, let's look at another one. Again, if you're on YouTube, just press pause, take all the time you need to work this out, and then you can see how I work it out. If you're here in class, you can be jotting it down right now as we do it. What is five less than a number is 14? So five less than a number is 14. So now we're gonna break this down into the, the different parts. We start off at five less. So that means I know five less than a number. So it's gonna be a subtraction there. Five less than a number. So I have a number is 14 is is equals and I bring the 14 down. So I went ahead and put them on there, but it says five less and we know five less we're gonna subtract. So like we did a minute ago, I just need to swap the order of those. So that's where I bring down the is 14 and I just swap the n and the five. That way it's n minus five equals 14. All right, so I'm here, I have my problem and now I can do my next my next step. What's the opposite of negative five? Or the opposite of subtracting five? If I have a negative five, what do I need to do? I need a positive five because those will cancel each other out. All right, so what I'm gonna do is add five to both sides. I add five on the left side. When I do that, what it's gonna do is make that negative five go away. If you owe me $5 and then you pay me $5, you owe me nothing, so it goes away. It's nothing now. And if you have 14 and you add five to the 14, that's gonna equal n equals 19. So you can see as we're doing this, how those equations are starting to balance out. Now we could put this back at the top. We could plug that 19 in. We could say 19, which was n, minus five equals 14. What's 19 minus five? That equals 14. So 14 equals 14. Is that a balance? Yeah, it balances. It's the same, 14 equals 14. So we know as we've done that, that that answer would be correct. 
All right, so here's one more that we're going to do. I don't know why that jumped into that wrong spot. I apologize. I apologize. All right, so take a couple seconds. If you're on YouTube, pause it. See if you can work this one out. This one gets a little longer because we're having to do two operations in there. So take a couple seconds to look at this one here in the class. And if you're on YouTube again, just hit pause and you can start it back when you're ready. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at it and break down the problem. We're gonna see what each one means. It starts off with three less. So three less means we're gonna subtract three. Three less than what? Less than 10 times. All right, so we have 10 times a number, which I use n again to represent the number. And a lot of times the reason I keep putting a number, I've seen it on the GED test a lot. They use a number, a number, and that kind of messes people up. You can use any variable you want. I usually use just n because it represents number. It helps me to, to see what I'm looking for there. And then I look at it and see equals 27. All right, so is 27, that part's pretty easy. A number, I can do that 10 times. I see what that is, three less, okay? So I have three less there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get my equation all written out. I go ahead and bring is 27 because that part's pretty easy. It's the simple side of the equation. So then I have 10, in. Now, if you notice, I left the dot out and I just put the 10 right next to the, the number because if it's touching, what does that mean? It means multiply. So I know that that's there. And then I bring the three less. I just subtract three from there. All right, so that's 10 in minus three equals 27. Now I'm going to just get it a little closer. I like to keep my equation all together because if it's spread out, Sometimes I lose something in there. So that's why I like to get it all bunched back together so I can see exactly what I'm looking at. And I need to solve this next part. Now, all I'm doing is just putting this on a separate page so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so here we are. What's the opposite of minus three? The opposite of minus three means positive three. All right, so what I'm gonna do is add three to both sides. Once I add three to both sides, I end up with 10 in equals 30. Okay, so I've, I've just, that one canceled out and I added three to this side, 27 plus three is 30. So now I'm at with 10 times in equals 30. Now you may look at this and go, oh, I know what that answer is automatically. Because if it's three times 10, that gives me 30. Well. How can I solve this by proving it? I wanna just prove that I have the right answer here. What I'm gonna do is, what's the opposite of 10 times n? What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So what I have to do is divide both sides by 10. When I divide both sides by 10, 10 divided by 10 leaves me with one. So one n is just one or n. And then 30 divided by 10 gives me n equals three. So as I simplified that out, the 10 over 10 cancels, 30 over 10 becomes three. So my answer is n equals three. And again, I can take this back to the very top and I could swap out that and just put the three there. 10 times three is 30 minus three equals 27. So that would give me 27 equals 27. And that gives me the balance that I'm looking for. And that's what we're trying to do. Again, like we talked about with the, uh, the father of algebra, it was about restoring and getting balance. And that's what we're doing on those problems. Now, this is a, a problem for you from last week. We did the same thing last week. Again, it's algebra. We had a formula that we were using to plug in and we plugged it in, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. C is the hypotenuse that we're looking at over here. So we know that C is the hypotenuse and we just plugged in five and 12. So we're doing the algebra, that's, that's all we're doing. It's the same thing that we did last week. The first step we have to do is find the squares of each of those. Five squared is 25, 12 squared is 144. 
once I've done that, now I got to do the next part. What's 25 plus 144? Add those together. That gives me 169. And now I have C squared. Now what I have to do, and remember, whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other side. So I find the square root of 169. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. Sorry about that. All right, so here we are. I have to get the square root of C squared and the square root of 169. When I do that, that leaves me with C on the right side and 13 on the left side because I did the same thing to both sides. I got through and that's where I'm left with. Now, what I could do, I could take that 13, put it at the very top, which if we did that, that would just give us I mean, you could see that's one, especially right there at that step, it's 169 equals 169. I mean, that gives you the same thing there. So you could see that that answer is correct. The another problem that we did, again, I give you that formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the Pythagorean theorem there. So we see that the formula is there. We just plug in the different numbers. This time we have a, b, and c. I think I did it that way, yeah. So we're missing A, that's the one we're looking for. We know B and C, so what are the steps that we do? We get the squares of each, that's 169, that's 144, we're looking for A. Once I get to here, what's the opposite of 144? The opposite of positive 144 is negative 144. So we subtract 144 from both sides, and that leaves us with A squared equals 25. Then here, we're gonna get the square root of each one of those. And once we get the square root of each one of those, we're left with, oh, I put B equals five. It should be A equals five on that one. But, um, whoops, just a little fix and <laughs> there we go. That's close enough to A. But um, you see, that's the problem that we did before. We didn't call it algebra. We just said, hey, this Pythagorean theorem, here's how you do it. But what we were doing there are the steps of algebra. All right, one last little slide of practice before we close. All right, here are four equations to solve. So take a couple seconds, and if you're on YouTube, again, you can pause it, work these out. If you're here in class, you can take a couple seconds to jot those down, and we will work them out. All right, you've had a little bit of time to work them. So here we go, let's look at each one of them. On the first one, we have four times N equals 32. What's the opposite of times is division. So on that one, we're gonna divide both sides by four. When we divide four N by four, we're left with N. When we divide 32 by four, we're left with eight. So on that one, N equals eight. On the next problem that we have here, we see that y plus d equals 12. What's the opposite of positive three? Is negative three. So we subtract three from both sides. That leaves us with y equals nine. On the bottom one, bottom left one, we see x minus 11 equals 19. What's the opposite of minus 11? it's positive 11. So we're gonna add 11 to both sides. X, they cancel out on the left side and that leaves us with 30. And then the last one, C divided by four equals nine. What's the opposite of divided by four? We're gonna multiply times four. When we multiply times four, it makes the four go away on the left side and nine becomes 36. So C equals 36. If you need more practice, again, go to Khan Academy. It's the best way to get the practice. You get instant feedback, there's hints, there's videos if you need it. I cannot, again, recommend enough going to Khan Academy to get extra practice on this. It is the best way that I can tell you to get practice on these skills. 
just put in algebraic expressions. There are tons of lessons and practice on there. Again, if you need more help, you can leave comments in the comment section on the video or email me. That email will come to me directly and I can get you some extra practice. If you need some one-on-one -on -one help with it, we can set up a Zoom class or uh, through Messenger on Facebook. There's um, some live videos, things that we can do. I will be more than glad to help you on any of those type of problems. Again, we will see you next week for Live with Andrew. This lesson will be on YouTube later today. If you saw it now and you want to go back and watch it, do that. If not, you can, if you're watching it already on YouTube, thank you. Please subscribe. And as always, that's me looking forward to next week's math topic. I get excited about this. I enjoy doing the math lessons and hopefully this was something that gave you some information that can help you learn how to do algebra a little bit better. If you have any other questions, please put it in the chat box or email it to me or leave your comments in the comments under the video. Hope you're staying safe, take care, and we will see you next time on Live with Andrew.